Hi, superstars. It's time for English. We are on Unit 7, Week 3. We are going to be talking about animal habitats in this unit. Where do animals live? So let's look at this picture. This is a fox. Where does this animal live? Well, it's in a hole. Do you think this fox lives in a hole? Yes, it does. Do you think the fox dug the hole? Yes, the fox dug the hole so it could live there. And that is the fox home sweet home. So we're gonna discuss where different animals live. We're going to watch a video that's going to talk about where animals live. Animal habitats. Where do animals live? Animals have homes just like people do. These curious foxes come out to explore. A fox's home or habitat is called a den. Clownfish have a special habitat in the ocean. Their home is in an animal called a sea anemone. Some animals live underground. A meerkat digs an underground burrow. Where do other animals live? Let's look and see where other animals live. What does this look like? These are bees. Bees live in nests called hives. Hives are made out of wax. A beaver's home is called a lodge. Beavers build dams to protect their homes. An owl builds its home high in the trees. The baby owls are safe inside the nest. Let's go over some vocabulary words that you will be hearing throughout this unit. The first word is habitat. Can you say that with me? Habitat. A fish must have water in its habitat. A habitat is the place where an animal lives and grows. Habitat. Complain. Complain. When you complain, you say that you are upset about something. I heard the basketball player complain about the game. Complain. Wild. A wild fox lives in the woods. Wild. A wild animal lives in nature and is not cared for by people. Wild. Join. When you join someone, you and the other person do something together. Join. I saw the skating teacher skate over to join the skating students. Join. Stubborn. Stubborn. The baby was being stubborn and she wouldn't sit in her high chair. Stubborn. If you are being stubborn, you refuse to change your mind about something. Stubborn. Said. This is a high frequency word. Said. Let's spell the word said. S A I D. Said. The vet said Max is fine. 
said. Want, another high frequency word. I want to see a box. Want, let's spell it together. W-A-N-T, want. Make sure you go over your vocabulary words so that you're familiar with them, so that you know what they mean when you see them or hear them. We're gonna find out about more places where animals live. Where do you think the animals live in this story? Well, you have different animals. We're gonna to have to read to find out. So I want you to think about what might happen next as you read or listen to this story. This is called predicting. So after you predict, you check to see if you're right by reading or listening more. And if you're not right, you can read again to look for clues about what was actually going to happen. The Bear Snores On, that's the title, is a fantasy story. A fantasy is a make-believe story and it could not happen in real life. In a fantasy story, the animal characters might talk. Let's begin. To Michael, David, and Chrissy, who love to wreak havoc while mom and dad snore on. K.W. For Alan Baker, my tutor. J.C. Bear Snores On by Karma Wilson. Illustrations by Jane Chapman. In a cave in the woods, in his deep dark lair, through the long cold winter, sleeps a great brown bear. So they said a dark lair in a cave in the woods in his deep dark lair. A lair is a place where a wild animal lives or rests. Lair. Cuddled in a heap with his eyes shut tight. He sleeps through the day. He sleeps through the night. The cold winds howl, and the night sounds growl, but the bear snores on. So we read that the wind is howling, and the night sounds are growling, but the bear keeps sleeping. So I predict that it's going to be very hard to wake bear up. He can sleep with a lot of noise. An itty-bitty mouse. Pitter-patter tiptoe, creep crawls in the cave from the fluff-cold snow. Mouse squeaks, too damp, too dank, too dark. So he lights wee twigs with a small hot spark. So when Mouse says too damp, too dank, too dark, what does dank mean, too dank? That means it's too cold and wet. Name the character on these pages. The character is the mouse. And what is the setting of these events? The bear's cave. So why does mouse go into the cave and light a fire? Because it's very cold outside. The coals pip pop and the wind doesn't stop, but the bear snores on. So bear keeps sleeping while the mouse makes a fire. So my prediction that it would be hard to wake up the bear was correct. Two glowing eyes sneak peek in the den. Mouse cries, who's there? and a hare hops in. Ho, mouse, says hare, long time no see. So they pop white corn, and they brew black tea. So let's look over here on page 12. Which words does mouth say 
on this page. The mouse is talking. What does he say? He says, who's there? So how do you know that? The marks, which are called quotation marks, are around the words and they show that someone is speaking. So how do you know the mouse is asking a question? Because look at the end of the sentence, there is a question mark. And that tells us that is a question. All right, let's continue. Mouse sips wee slurps. Hair burps big burps. What does slurps mean? It says mouse sips wee slurps. Slurps means to drink noisily. So he's making a lot of noise when he's drinking. And look at bear. The bear. But the bear snores on. He snores on. He's not waking up. A badger scuttles by, sniff snuffs at the air. I smell yummy yums. Perhaps we can share. Can you name the character on this page, page 16, right here? It's Badger. So what does Badger do? Let's see. I've brought honey nuts, Badger says with a grin. Let's divvy them up, cozy down, and dig in. All right, so what does Badger do? He goes into the cave. So do you remember why he goes into the cave? Over here on page 16, it says, I smell yummy yums. He smells something yummy. So when it says badger scuttles right here, badger scuttles, that means he moves quickly with short steps. And they nibble and they munch with a chew, chomp, crunch. But the bear snores on. So what do you think will happen next? Do you think more animals will come into the cave? Maybe. Why do you think so? Because it's cold outside and the animals want to stay warm. A gopher and a mole tunnel up through the floor. Then a wren and a raven flutter in through the door. Mole mutters, what a night, what a storm, twitters Wren, and everybody clutters in the great bear's den. So I read the word mutters here. So what do you think mutter means? The sentence says, mole mutters, what a night. I know that mole is saying it because of the quotation marks. That's telling us that someone is saying it when you have quotation marks. So mutter must be another word for says. They tweet and they titter. They chat and they chitter. But the bear snores on. In a cave in the woods, a slumbering bear sleeps through the party in his very own lair. So what does a slumbering bear mean? It means he's sleeping. Hare stokes the fire, mouse seasons stew. Then a small pepper fleck makes the bear... Okay, what does seasons mean over here? It says, Hair stokes the fire and mouse seasons stew. What does that mean, season stew? When you say seasons, it means you add salt or spices to give the food more flavor. So over here, it says, then a small pepper flick makes the bear. So we read that a small pepper flake is going to make 
the bear do something. I think maybe the pepper will make him do something different. So I predict that it might make bear wake up. Let's see. Kachu. He blows and he sneezes, and the whole crowd freezes. What does Bear do on this page? He sneezes. What caused Bear to sneeze? The pepper that Mouse put in the stew. And the bear wakes up. Bear gnarls and he snarls. Bear roars and he rumbles. Bear jumps and he stomps. Bear growls and he grumbles. So the bear makes a lot of different loud noises. You've snuck in my lair and you've all had fun, but me, I was sleeping and. I have had none, and he whimpers, and he moans, he wails, and he groans, and the bear blubbers on. Mouse squeaks, "Don't fret, don't fuss. Look, see, we can pop more corn, we can brew more tea." Why does Mouse offer to make more tea and popcorn? Because Bear is sad that he missed all of the fun. Bear didn't have anything to eat while all the other animals were eating. Bear gulps. Bear gobbles. He sighs with delight. Then he spins tall tales through the blustery night. When the sun peeks up on a crisp, clear dawn, Bear can't sleep. All right. In this picture, I see the animals having fun together. In my mind, I can picture the warm fire and the smell of the stew. So this helps me understand why they're having fun. But his friends snore on. So why are Bear's friends asleep? They're all tired because they stayed up all night. So now the bear is awake. Open up your close reading companion to page eighty-one. Make sure you put your name, your first name, and your last name at the top of the page, and the date. So we read the story. Bear snores on. Which words show that the events in the cave began quietly? So we're going to circle the words, and you're going to draw a picture. So we're going to look over here and see which of these words describe quiet, going into the cave quietly. So the first one is tiptoe. When you tiptoe, are you being quiet? Yes. So we, you can circle that one. That means you're walking very quietly. You're tiptoeing. The next one is fluff cold. Does that mean you're going quietly somewhere? No, no. It's just fluff cold. That does not describe events in the cave that were quiet. How about cave? Is that describing quiet events in the cave? No, that's just telling us about the cave. All right. The fourth one is pitter pat. Is that describing quiet events? Yeah, when you pitter pat, you're walking lightly. So pitter pat would be another word. To describe being quiet. How about squeaks? No, squeaks is not being quiet. Or light. That's not telling us about a sound. Or damp. How about damp? Does that tell us about a quiet sound? No, it doesn't. So, tiptoe 
and pitter pat are describing the quiet events. So over here, what you're going to do is you're going to draw about those words and the what they what they represented in the story. So you would draw the cave and you would show that it was quiet in the cave because when you're tiptoeing and pitter patting, you're being really quiet. They didn't want to wake up there. So draw a cave and show that it was quiet in the cave. And down here, we're going to complete this sentence. It says words that show it is quiet are, so which words did we pick? Tip, toe, and what else? And Peter Pat. Peter. Cat. And don't forget the period at the end. All right, let's turn our page over to page 82. All right, we're on page 82. Make sure you put your name and date at the top. Okay, what story patterns do you notice and what changes inside the cave and what stays the same? So here it says the changes in the cave are that, what kept changing? More animals keep coming. So we're going to write over here, more animals keep coming. More animals keep coming. All right, now over here, it says what stays the same. So what stays the same in the story at the beginning? What does the bear do? The bear keeps, what was he doing? He was sleeping, right? And when he was sleeping, he was snoring. So the bear keeps snoring. So we have the things that stay the same and the things that are different. The things that stay the same are more animals keep coming in and the things that, the thing that changes, I'm sorry, more animals keep coming. And the thing that stays the same is the bear keeps snoring. So down here, let's complete the sentence. It says more and more animals enter the cave, but what does the bear keep doing? The bear snores on, All right? Good job, superstars. Until next time, have a wonderful day. Bye.